I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time once again for Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. And on the show this week, we've got some stuff for you that I think you're going to like. Trust you do. We are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. We're also proud members of the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. <laughs> yes, indeedy. Uh, let me remind you of our website, drbill.tv, D-R-B-I-L-L dot TV, as it says there on the screen. You can always go there for the latest articles, videos, and general silliness that I espouse. There you go. All right, this week, we've got a show for you that includes a little bit of a problem that I'm having with my PC, my personal, my personal PC. Now, I have a dedicated PC that does this show right here. It has a high-end video card. It has lots of memory. It has, it's a, it's a powerful machine. It's an old machine, <laughs> but it's a powerful machine, all right? Circa about, oh, 2014-ish? So it's an older machine, but okay, it works. You know, what can I say? Anyway, but my personal machine uh, that I use on a daily basis, that is kind of my little world that I use, is an HP Micro machine. Very nice little machine. It's still older, <laughs> but not as old as this one. Not quite new enough for Windows 11, but still... Newer than the one that I'm currently using. <laughs> anyway, I digress. The point is, I'm having a problem with that little machine. I don't know why. <laughs> I'll show it to you here in the video. And you can see what's happening with search. Very strange. But it led me to this week's... Uh, <laughs> yes, Geek Software of the Week. Gotta love the Geek Software of the Week drum roll. <laughs> it's loud, if nothing else. Anyway, so I encourage you to check out the video that we're about to go into. And before we do, let me remind you to subscribe to this channel. If you're not subscribed to the channel, then ding the little bell. And, uh, you know, as it says there, and it will really help the show out, okay? All right, let's go into this video and you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, today we're going to take a look at something that I found that I wanted to really feature. We can call it our Geek Software of the Week for this week. Uh, I wanted to show you a program called Explorer++. Now, in order to really appreciate my, my issue, let me go here and bring up File Explorer. This is the regular File Explorer that comes with Windows 10. And uh, you notice up here there's a Search Quick Access now, I'm going to click on it here in just a second and type a word. Let's see what happens. W-O-R-D. You see how it just goes blank and gray? That's it. I can't type in that box. I click on it, and it just gives me a gray box, and that's it. I searched the entire Internet. I looked at everything I could. I saw that, oh, yeah, this is happening with other people. I suspect it's been caused by some kind of update or something. Or maybe it's just that my settings, I'm always messing with my computer, so who knows. Maybe I set a setting wrong. But I have checked my uh, Windows Explorer process. I've restarted the process. I've rebooted. I've done everything I could do, and nothing seemed to fix it. Well, that left me with no way to do a search within File Explorer, and I was like, okay, this is not going to work. Unless you think, unless you think that I haven't thought about putting the search icon on my, uh, my screen. Let me go back up here. 
search show search box here we go notice the search box down here if I try to click on it and type can't type in it click nothing try to type a word nothing it just doesn't work so let me go back up here get rid of the search box so what do I do well I found a program to replace file explorer it's called explorer plus plus and I went ahead and put it here and I put it on the tray down here where I normally would have my file explorer so that when I click it it brings up file explorer all right now it leaves it brings you back to the point that you last used your uh, computer so that's why it opened to that page but notice you have tabbed sessions here now I realize that that feature was just added to Windows 11 okay this is Windows 10 so they now have tabs in File Explorer so okay this program allows you to do it with Windows 10 so here's the thing that I like about it not only do you have the normal File Explorer thing you notice up here there's no search but there is a search over here this little icon so I can click that and it brings up a very thorough and complex search now of course it remembers the last thing that I searched there so I'm gonna back up and say and you could use wildcards uh, let's just say file star file on C click and notice how fast it comes up with any file that has the word file in the title pretty nice I like that so we're gonna close that out but there's a lot of other things that this does you can favorite or put bookmarks for different directories that you go to very often you can refresh your screen which is you know pretty handy to be able to do that you can have different views with details just like file explorer very similar layout similar options uh, and it has a very strong help system built in now explore plus plus is open source freeware does not cost you a penny you download it you install it actually it's a standalone file you, I put it in my utilities directory on my C drive and that's how I'm using it but you can come over here and like for instance look at toolbars and it gives you a very nice description of how to use the address bar the main toolbar bookmarks drives the whole nine yards um, so simple way to learn how to use it uh, you can customize your layout and so forth you can control the folders pane um, lots and lots of different options so that's really handy the other thing you can do that I found extremely useful for me uh, because I, I program a lot of different uh, files and so forth if I go to a file that has text files in it right here I've got a lot of XML files text files things of that nature if you were to go here and right click one of the options you can do is um, let's see if I can find it because I'm still getting used to it uh, let's see send to always available open with share split uh, well, I split with get glare utilities that's a different thing hold on text file tools actions view file edit you can tell I am still learning the system um, split there we go you can split a file or you can merge a file of course you have to have two files to merge it so split a file I can split it in different parts speakers dot uh, uh, dash blurbs dot text dot parts okay if I had two files I wanted to join let's say this one and this one I could hold shift down 
uh, actually control down and select both of these. Then if I come up here to actions, I can merge the files, which would allow me to click here, put the files in different order. So for instance, move it up, move it down to change the order of, of how they're going to be saved. And then I can come down here, name the file, whatever I want to call it. It automatically puts in the word output. So uh, we'll go without output.text. Click merge. Okay. Close it. And notice we've got a file output.text. That file is going to be the combination of the two files I selected. But now let's say that I want to delete it. I can obviously right click and delete. But what if I wanted to delete it, wipe it off the drive, and securely overwrite it so that nobody could recover it? Because like most of you may know from watching our program before, a file that is deleted is not really deleted. It's marked as deleted. It doesn't show up anymore in your screen, but it's still out there and could be recovered. So if we want to destroy it, <laughs> we come over here to Actions and Destroy File. So now I've got that file, and it'll say I'm going to overwrite it. I can overwrite it three times or one time. Please note that this operation is complete. The file will not be available. Okay. Boom. Files that are destroyed will permanently be deleted and will not be recoverable. Are you sure? Yes. And at this point, the file is deleted. Now, it's going to take a minute to, to do that, so I shouldn't hit cancel. Um, I'm just going to have to let it run to complete. But it's actually overriding the disk in that area to make it a secure delete, a destroy, rather than a delete, okay? So that's pretty handy. I really shouldn't hit cancel. I've kind of got it sitting there going, whoa, 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 what did you want me to do? So uh, we'll let that go. As a matter of fact, I think what I'll do is just go into Task Manager and uh, kill the process. There we go. And then bring it back up. And it brings me back up to where I was. Now let's see. Let's uh, click on that. Go up here. Destroy. One pass. OK. Yes. And this time I'm not going to click on it. I'm going to let it do its thing here. <laughs> but at any rate. You can see that this is really pretty handy to be able to do that. So you can merge files, you can separate files, you can destroy files so that they aren't recoverable. You can uh, do all kinds of things. Now, you know what just occurred to me? The reason this may not be working the way I think it should, and this is something I'm just finding out as we go into this, so bear with me. Let's end the task again. Here's why I, th I think this is happening. If we were to go here and look at this, this is on a file share on a Linux file server. Okay? And I'm betting it's having a hard time destroying the file that is shared out under that, uh, uh, that particular file server. So I'm going to go to a local directory and I'm going to create a new rich text document. And we'll just call this new. Well, I misspelled it. There we go, new. New rich text document. I'm going to highlight it. Go over here to actions. Go to destroy. One pass. Okay. Yes. That destroyed it quickly. <laughs> That's what it was. It was saying, whoa, wait a minute. You're wanting me to delete something off of a Linux server and you don't have permissions and blah, blah, blah. And there you go. So uh, that that's at least something that we realized what was happening. But I am getting used to this, like I say. Uh, most of the time, if I wanted to go back to that file, which I actually do because I don't want to keep that one, and go back down to the XML directory and go back to our output, I can right-click, delete, yes, and it's deleted. And what all that did is send a signal to the Linux file server and say, yeah, I want to delete that file. Mark it as deleted. Boom. It's done. Uh, and I could do that with all the rest of these dot .back files that I don't need anymore either. And the shortcut that shouldn't be there anyway. We'll just clean up this directory while we're here. There we go. Okay. 
So that is Explorer++, which I find a very nice replacement for Windows uh, actual File Explorer application. I don't know why it's doing what it's doing in Windows or what I may have done. Like I said, I've tried I've tried uh, doing a repair on Windows. I've tried doing a uh, file check on Windows. I've tried everything I can think of to get back the functionality in File Explorer for searching. If you happen to know why that's happening, send me suggestions. <laughs> comment to this video and let me know because I am not proud. <laughs> I will take anything you've got to share with me along that line. There you go. You see, that's a neat little piece of software. Explore++. Plus Plus. Now, like I said, I'm a big fan of Notepad++. Plus Plus, um, And I've used it for years, but Explore++ Plus Plus is kind of cool what all it can do. And as you saw in that video, I'm discovering more things about it all the time and experimenting with it. So if I find some really cool feature that I haven't yet found, I'll share that with you later. But that'll do it for this week. Remember until next time that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill, the computer promotion is a production of drbillbailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ding the bell to be notified of future videos.